Hi, Pat the Podcast Editor here. This week, Dan and Lloyd are talking about the importance of storytelling in your marketing. Everybody's got a story, and a good one can really reinforce the credibility of your work and the way it's perceived. But sometimes it's hard to know where to start. We're telling the story of projects we've worked on, and we set it out like a story, Yeah. so that then people are like, oh, they can do that thing, oh, I'm really considering working with them. So I think Mm. that's the first step. Now, there are a lot of people out there doing interesting things, but it doesn't always occur to them to let the world know. All of that storytelling helps build trust, helps build credibility. One of the biggest mistakes I see businesses making is they never talk about any of the work they do. So we know that people like a good story, but what if my life isn't that interesting? Surely I can just make anything up for people on the internet. Telling made up um, ridiculous stories is worse than not storytelling, I think. You know, when you hear yeah. about, I walked past a man and a dog and he didn't. He didn't have any clothes or, or anything. Yeah. And, and I interviewed just him hired, and gave him a job. Yeah, I just hired him as the CEO of my business. Well, well, I've got you. If at any point you're enjoying the show and you want to give a little something back, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe, you can show a friend. It really goes a long way to helping us bring this show to more people. Thank you. Right, are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. This is episode 49 of the Business Anchors podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Is storytelling a wanky marketing term or is it something that's actually useful for businesses, Lloyd? I used to think storytelling in general was just a bit of a wanky thing. Um, But now I realise it's really important in business, even outside of marketing and our video stuff we do and everything. It's really important in my eyes. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, Dan? Um, I'll tell you, I honestly... I'll tell you the why. I I agree with you. And I... um, The first time I realised storytelling actually works was to do with speaking on stage at events. Mm -hmm. Because when I started out speaking to small audiences and I was peeing my pants, sweating, and I was rubbish and hated it, when you looked in the audience, there's kind of different levels of people showing, uh, paying attention. Mm. So there's the people who actively, uh, they're really not interested and they just will look at their phone and don't even try and look at you. Then there's the people who kind of pretend to, to look at you or not. And when I s- started speaking, most people were in that bucket of not paying attention. And then one time, I remember reading... Um, are we going to say something? No, I just... That must have been depressing. Well... I think at the time I was so nervous that I didn't really care if they liked it or not. It was just more, I need to do this. Yeah. And then eventually... Before I get completely dehydrated from the sweating and... Yeah, and the sweaty palms and... Mm. But eventually when I actually... arms are heavy. Yes, Lloyd, thanks. Uh, Eventually... Vomit on my sweater already. Yeah, thanks, Lloyd. That's right. Eventually when I realised and I got better and I read... um, Ted's Guide to Public Speaking and, and learn a lot more about speaking, I learned that it's important to tell stories on stage and started to realise that when I, did, when I didn't just share information and actually told a story, people sort of started to listen. Mm. And I was like, oh, this whole storytelling thing actually I works noticed, a bit. I noticed a major switch like with your public speaking and speaking on stage and stuff. It was like that. Like You could be delivering some really value-adding, like useful stuff for the audience, but they weren't always overly... Engage. Like half of them, like you said, were kind of like, oh, yeah, interesting. Half of mm. them were just like, nah. Yeah. Even though it, it was really good stuff. Whereas um, I think I remember an event in Lithuania, you were speaking. I can't remember what it was called. Um, Supernova? Yes, Supernova. Hey. That was um, a wicked event, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was. I remember you, you starting with some kind of story. And I remember looking at the crowd because I was doing, I was shooting some, uh, some footage of their reactions and mm. stuff. And it, you could see everyone just like smiling and like mm. nodding and looking and looking interested. And I thought it's a great way, especially at the start of something, to it get people... It draws people in, yeah, doesn't it? And, and even though the story you were telling was less relevant and useful to them than the, the like... Oh, practical, practical information. Stuff, they were far more, got far more engaged, which was interesting. Mm. I, I've got a bit of a story about storytelling. Go on. So I went through a stage at university in between the vodka and dominoes, because that took up 
a lot, a of, lot of your time. time, yeah. But where I was actually motivated and uh, oh, punch the mic. Oh, we haven't Classic. had that in a couple of episodes. Oi. Punch the mic. I was actually quite motivated to learn and I was thinking like, oh, I want to do good things in my life. Didn't really know what. Yeah. But I got to this thing where I was like, if I'm weirdly outside of the 80%, I was like, I've got to use my time productively. And I basically stopped watching TV and films. I stopped like reading books. I stopped anything like that because I kind of thought those things were pointless and didn't add value to my life. So I started just watching documentaries. Ooh, and I started you watching watch? YouTube videos to learn. Mm. And um, I started reading non-fiction books. I was like, this is productive. Whereas I thought taking in these stories, like watching films, stuff like that, Isn't I saw film? as like a waste of people's time. Mm. And if I'm honest, I used to like, I was like, oh, they're just watching films. I'm so much better. I'm learning stuff. <laughs> um, and I actually remember a time about three or four years no, not three or four, probably two, three years into our business, when I realised um, how important storytelling was in life and in business. Mm. I remember calling my friend Paul, because he did script writing at uni, and he basically watched like three films a day and never sleeps. Yeah. Um, I called him and I was like, I've just realised, you always used to talk about films, and I used to be not interested, and be like, why are you... Why are you spending so much time on films and stuff? Loser. And I was like, now I'm so into it. I've realized like storytelling is such a skill and that it's such an art. And in all walks of life, it's really important. Yeah. And I'm now getting much back, much more back into stories and mm. like consuming stories and telling my own stories. And that was like a massive turning mm. point, I remember, in my life. Yeah. That was a story. It, it's how weird. did I do? Very good. Cool. Thanks. The end. It's, it's weird how. Um, People can tell you stuff, like even at school when people tell you these kinds of things, like stories, you should be you know, watching stories and using stories mm. until you get into a situation where um, it's, you realise because you do it yourself that it works, like my speaking thing. Yeah. Um, it's weird that you need to actually do it. Like I realised as well with um, copywriting, with, with mm. a copy of the posts I do for my kind of personal brand on LinkedIn, yeah. I always used to share very practical, here's three things you can learn about marketing. One... Good thing, too. Well, good thing. Oh, we haven't had, uh, haven't had the radio voice in a while, have we? No, please, continue. Yeah. Step one. <laughs> yeah, carry on. So, so that was... Um, and then when I, when I moved from just saying, sharing practical, one, two, three, and actually started mm. to tell stories like, oh, last week in our business, something crazily bad happened, and this is what it taught me, and, mm. and that kind of thing. I'm going to tell you a story about how I discovered three steps. <laughs> Not quite. No, a better story than that. Okay. But, al but also, I think there is a lot of kind of douchebaggy stories on LinkedIn where people just make up stuff. Uh, mm. You know, telling made up um, ridiculous stories is worse than not storytelling, I think. You know, when you hear yeah. about, I walked past a man and a dog and he didn't, you yeah. know, have any... He didn't have any clothes or, or anything. Yeah. And, and I interviewed him and gave him a job. Yeah, I've just hired him as the CEO of my business. It's like, no, you haven't. Yeah, but they, they get thousands of views on LinkedIn, mm. which is mm. mental. Yeah. Um, I, I suppose that shows the, the power of storytelling, though. Even if you're making <laughs> shit up and you're being <laughs> yeah. a douchebag, if you tell a good story, it draws people in. Yeah. Um, but I think there's, I hate the word authentic again, but authentic storytelling is really important. Like, mm -hmm. recently, um, I've started playing around with TikTok for myself, just in my spare basically time. Basically a TikToker. And, um, Hashtag influencer. I last week I created a video of uh, we recently we ran a really exciting contract and one of our team captured a moment of me on the phone winning it and then us like celebrating and hugging mm -hmm. and he captured that and then I created a video on TikTok shared it on LinkedIn and it was a really good storytelling piece so of content. So much going on there with such marketers. <laughs> created it on TikTok, shared it on LinkedIn. <laughs> No, we yeah. said it on LinkedIn because we've got a bigger audience and it got like mm. 20 odd thousand views, hundreds of comments and stuff. And mm. it really, it captured that authentic storytelling. Like we didn't plan mm. that, but we're just capturing things that are going on behind the scenes. And I think the reason that did so well, so that in itself was a story where like you saw, you were on the phone and there's like the suspense of, it's like in reality in that video, it's like a second, but you're thinking, oh, what's happening? Yeah. And then you start jumping around. You tell us, like, there's not even any audio, no, but it's you got can music see it visually. Um, and then you tell us whatever it is, and then I look happy. And then at the end, and you had like, a tash. Uh, and I had, had a tash, which really adds the story. <laughs> and then at the end, we hug and embrace, and it's like, oh, emotion. And it's, yeah. it's that raw emotion with, 
with that that really, I think, has made it very engaging with people. And that is the job uh, as marketers, storytellers, content creators. It's triggering that emotion. But obviously, most of the time, it's not just capturing, this is a real thing that's happening. Yeah. You're trying to create that mm. emotion-triggering stuff, which is the yeah. challenge. And I think that that video alone really reinforced the importance of not just producing highly produced content but also like that that took me i think about 10 minutes to make and it got mm. as more views and engagements than some of the other content that we produce that's highly mm. produced so yeah it's it's um do you know why i think in marketing and business people are failing with storytelling why i think uh, a lot of the storytelling we we need to do now online as marketers or in business is very short form. So we've got platforms that um, short form content is the best thing to do on there mm. to get attention and stuff. And I think people think, oh, well, that's just a short video. I can't tell a story in the, in a short video. Mm. Like, oh, that's just an Instagram story. It's literally got story in the in what it <laughs> yeah, is. Nice and but title. people think, oh no, I can't tell a story because that's just a short thing. Yeah. And I just think you that's. Can. Like you can, uh, I think this was like a something I did at school. But two sentences can be a story. Mm. So it's basically like, "Oh, I always knew I was creative, but it's only since I've had this job that I really feel I can pursue my passion in creativity." So it's like, "Oh, yeah. the one thing, how? Oh, I knew I was creative, but I couldn't yeah. do anything, and then I can. Yeah. Oh, it's something's changed, and there's that yeah. difference in emotion and." So I think it's more difficult than you think, though, just to, to, to tell a story. Hmm. Like, uh, but, but I think one of the easiest places to start, if, if someone's listening to this thinking, mm, I don't really tell many stories in my marketing, hmm. how can I sort of add that in? I think one of the easiest things to, to start with is using the platforms that you mentioned, like Instagram stories, you know, like Facebook stories, Snapchat, because you hmm. can very easily create behind the scenes short snippets showing the story of what goes mm. on within your business. Yeah. Um, and we've started doing that more. Yeah. I, I guess people sometimes try, it's building like that brand story, the story behind your brand and seeing these. And stories can be told um, at different lengths and over different um, periods of time. So on Instagram stories or somewhere like TikTok or Re Instagram Reels or wherever you're doing this, mm. um, it can be episodic. Oui. So, oui. <laughs> long word that doesn't really add anything. Um, so, you can be telling the story of your brand and your business over time. You can be posting one story a day, um, but actually, over time, people will get your brand and what you're up mm. to and the story of how your business is developing. It doesn't have to be, we've got to put this loads of time into this piece of content that we're putting out mm. once a week or once a month or this big project. It can be little things over time mm. that tell a story over the long term. And I think that's something we've done mm. quite well with our business, as well as the content that we put lots of effort in to, for this one thing. Mm. You're very good at this, telling this, oh, we're doing this behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh, we've hired this new person. Yeah. Oh, we're planting these trees. And it's and telling the story of our business. In terms of mapping that storytelling to actually tangible results, all of that storytelling helps build trust, helps build credibility. One of the biggest mistakes I see businesses making is they never talk about any of the work they do. Like there's some, mm. there's some businesses doing some amazing work and they just never talk about it. And yeah. um, you know, a big part of marketing is about perception, how people perceive you. Mm. And there's lots of people who are doing this the wrong way and you know, building a big perception of them doing lots of great stuff when really it's kind of false and it's manufactured. But there's lots of businesses who are doing good you know mm. good work and they're not talking about it more so i get frustrated when i see that and the people i've met and i i've heard about the great work they do and i really like them and then i see online i'm There's like nothing. why aren't they yeah why aren't they putting but that's that's the stuff that you know and even it's all these little kind of touch points when we meet people and they say oh i saw that you're mm. you've hired again i've saw that your office is growing mm. and it's all these things that people are seeing that are building that credibility i think a lot of people think, oh, no one, wants, no one cares about us hiring people or building a team or you know, building out our office. Um, no one cares about any of that. 
but they do in the sense that it helps build trust, build credibility. So if you're not sharing that behind the scenes mm. look into your business and how you're growing and developing, mm. then it's it's going to make it more difficult to build trust and get customers. Mm. Also, with elements where people are like, oh, that's not interesting enough to talk about. I mean, we use in our marketing and our creative strategy, sometimes we tell stories that aren't about the business or the thing we want to communicate and then we link the the point so we get the attention with the story mm. so for example we spoke about this a couple of episodes ago i think in the atomic and hotmart video where we had that guy rugby tackle me yeah um the story was like oh he's angry he hears this thing going on and he goes and takes me out and takes mm. me out of the situation and then so once we've got the viewer engaged got the attention then you can then tell he something says, more practical atomic and hotmart aren't going to have these rubbish speakers. We're going to have good ones. Yeah. So that sentence isn't interesting, but we've got the attention mm. with that story and then we deliver the yeah. point. And you can do that. Obviously, you don't have to have people rugby tackling, but it's that that strategy of you can either tell an interesting story about what you're trying to mm. communicate or you can tell an interesting story and then go, oh, by the way, now you're here, mm. this thing I'm communicating. So trying to get a bit practical and a bit, People, you know, so people can listen and think, right, I'm actually going to start doing this thing to mm -hmm. help introduce storytelling into our marketing. What, what kind of things can people do? Like, where do you start? Well, I think... And what makes a good story? Like, what, what's we, in a good story? Uh, Tell I, me a story. I feel like I'm Boris Johnson there, because, you know, when he gets asked multiple questions, he goes, well, there's a few questions there. Firstly, <laughs> uh, the first question you said, how can people get started? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, don't go to work. Don't go to work. <laughs> um, was that a good impression? Yeah, yeah. very good. Um, first thing, we talk about a lot, the marketing funnel, traditional marketing funnel. It's very simple in the world of business, but it, it really makes sense. We have awareness, getting people's attention, consideration. Building making trust. Them think, oh, should I work with them? Do I trust them? And then purchase or other things people call them, which is basically like making it easy for them to buy from you. Mm. And we tell stories throughout these three levels. You talk about this a lot, don't you? Dan? Yeah. Um, and I think that's one thing to think about. So if you're at point zero of, oh, I was saying about telling stories, where do I start? That's a good starting splitting, point, that framework. Splitting them up like that. So awareness. What stories can we tell and things to just get attention first, mm. get people to be aware of our business or what we're doing? Mm. And then beyond that, right, what stories can I tell? So we, for example, we do case study videos. We're telling the story mm. of projects we've worked on and we set it out like a story Yeah. so that then people are like, oh, they can do that thing. Oh, I'm really considering working with them. So I think mm. that's the first step. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I also think, and even I was thinking this, when someone says telling stories, I think a lot of people would perceive that as you sit down in front of camera and you, you open a book and tell Once a story. Once upon a time. Once upon a time, there was a business. But mm. really, as we've said before, there's like micro pieces of content, just showing snippets on Instagram stories or um, you know having a photo of you and your team on your day outing and putting a bit of copy behind what you're doing mm. and why you're doing it. These are all stories. It's not, it's not like you in front of the camera reading a book. It's understanding that yeah, everything can be a story. Yeah, I think that's the first step. And obviously, you can take this to so many levels. And, and we have the team here. We've built up a team that are great at storytelling and have mm. their technical skills as well. So there's huge steps. But I think that's a good starting, starting point. point. <laughs> mm. Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> oh, we're, oh, we're basically oh, brothers. Sure, yeah. yeah, we are. Yeah. Mm. What other things can do you think people do? Or what other parts of a story should people be thinking about? Well, I think... Thinking about so your second question, second, <laughs> second part of the question, yeah, um, like what elements make a good story and how to think about that sort of thing. I think um, we could talk for hours on this, and obviously on please don't YouTube, <laughs> YouTube and stuff. There are loads of great things about storytelling and mm. that kind of thing. I think a few things, um, obviously strong characters within your story. So whether that's like us and we have a production, we have an actor who's this hero mm. character that represents your potential customer and stuff. That's one end of the scale. The other end of the scale is, oh, we haven't created any content before. No one knows about our business. We're who, the characters. Who are going to be the characters within our business to get out to the outside world and how mm. can we show their personality and their skills? Mm. So that's one thing. Um, I also think in storytelling, it's that, what we were talking about before, that change of emotion and change of feeling mm. throughout the story. And that could be as simple as, 
we had this challenge and it was hard. And then we did this and we did yeah. this great thing for our clients. That's the kind of thing. The and ups and downs make a good story, don't they? If it was all just, yeah, we did really well and then we got exactly. even better and we grew. Whereas it's, yeah. and again, it was rubbish. It was good. Then there's we... so much stuff you can learn on this. But uh, a narrative arc is something that um, is important in storytelling. Again, if you're interested in this, look it up and you can read lots about it and find out stuff. But it's that thing of... There's different levels throughout the story and it kind of goes like a roller coaster. So you set it up and there's rising action and then you have this climax in a mm. story and then the, it, goes wrong. it goes back down and then there's a resolution and mm. stuff like that. Um, and that's really interesting. And again, this is going into more detail and, and more of the kind of creative tools to tell a good story. Mm. But I think the 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 thing that makes businesses go wrong with storytelling and their content and their marketing is they just look and go, oh, I've got to do an Instagram story. What are my competition doing? What, what's uh, what's <laughs> Posting the, pictures of their dinner. Yeah. What's the other engineering company down the road posting? I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Whereas like we always say with our business and, and how we do things, set your bar high outside of your business, outside of your industry. You know, you, you should be looking at things like a narrative arc because that's what they do in feature films. So I think... You know, how could we? Whose Instagram story is going to be best and most engaging? The people that have thought about this stuff mm. and are like, how are good stories told in mm. films, in books, in comedies, and in dramas? Or the guy's like, oh, my competitor posted a picture of his dinner, so I'll do it. Yeah. You know, which business is going to thrive, and which which mm. isn't? Yeah. Sorry, storytelling rent. No, that was really good. Peace out. A town down. <laughs> what song was that? Um, can't remember. Cool. So to summarise, um, uh, I think it's important that you don't overthink storytelling. It's not about getting on camera and opening a book and reading it. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things going on in your business. You know, micro piece of content you can create mm -hmm. very easily with things like Instagram stories, um, and start there. What else? I think that's a good point. Like we, we've just at the end of that conversation been going into like aspects of storytelling that will seem completely alien to most mm. business owners and stuff. But in reality, it can be much easier than, than you think. Like we said, storytelling can be done in a case study. Storytelling can be done in two sentences about your business. Mm. In a photo and yeah. some copy. And then there's the other end. Once you start doing that stuff or if you're already, already doing that stuff, how can you improve storytelling within your business? Mm. And setting the bar high, what, what are other people doing that are storytellers and let's try and emulate some of that and that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's easy and it's hard. Do it now. Right, tell us a story, Dan. Um, that put me on the spot a bit. Uh, See, Dan... I've got loads of stories. What do you, what do you want to hear about? Um, maybe we'll save the brilliant stories for the next episode. Oh, yeah, because we're talking about something really interesting Yeah, next. yeah, save those brilliant stories, Dan. Yeah. Um... Yeah, we'll, we'll see you in the next episodes of the Business Anchors podcast where Dan will definitely be telling brilliant stories, so make sure you listen. Um, thanks, you guys. See you next week. Whoop.